This is the 17th meeting of criminal law. We continue our study of the law of attempt crimes. The case of Smallwood versus State is illuminating. Pictured above is the human immunosuppressant virus, or HIV. The virus is transmitted by sexual contact. Persons infected with HIV often develop AIDS, a disorder of the body's immune system that is likely to cause death. Smallwood was a rapist convicted of attempted murder. Smallwood knew he was HIV positive and yet used no protection. The issue that concerns us is the culpability that the prosecution must show to convict Smallwood of attempted murder. In other words, we are asking what mens rea is required to convict an accused of an attempt to bring about a death, death being the result element that defines the homicide offenses. It is likely that the prosecution can establish the actus reus, whether that be a substantial step, as under the model penal code, or dangerous proximity, as under Rizzo. Our focus is the mens rea, or culpability element. We want to take a careful look at how an opinion the court cites expresses this element. The required culpability is the specific intent to murder, i.e. the specific intent to kill. Let's substitute the model penal code expression purpose for the phrase specific intent. You are right to wonder what is the difference between intent and specific intent. We will come back to this when we return to the topic of intoxication. For now, it is enough to note that purpose is the level of culpability that the prosecution must show as to the result element. What is the result element? It is death. So what must be shown is a purpose to kill. The ERP opinion cited by the court also rather casually states that the result element is to murder. This could confuse the jury. Consider this case, Thacker versus Commonwealth. In Thacker, the male defendant made advances to the victim. She rebuffed them. Angered, the defendant walked away from her tent, turned, and fired a shot at the light inside. The shot left the victim uninjured. The defendant was prosecuted for attempted murder. The jury would have to be instructed as to the elements of murder as part of the court's charge. The jury will be told that murder is killing with malice aforethought, which would include acting with a depraved heart rather than intentional killing. If the jury is instructed that the defendant is guilty of attempted murder if he acts with a specific intent to murder, a jury might erroneously conclude that acting with depraved recklessness suffices. It does not. What the prosecution must prove to convict Thacker, or Smallwood, of attempted murder is the purpose, or specific intent, to kill. This means, of course, that a higher level of culpability must be shown to convict the accused of the attempt than what would suffice if he had succeeded in his attempt. If Smallwood or Thacker had caused a death, they would be convictable of murder on a mere showing of reckless indifference to life, a.k.a. depraved heart. But to convict them of attempted murder, they must be shown to have had the purpose of causing death. So, carefully stated, the culpability that has to be shown is purpose to kill, not purpose to murder. The expression purpose to murder could confuse the jury. Consider now a hypothetical case. Two young men stand on an overpass and throw bowling balls onto the freeway below. No one is injured, but the young men are arrested and prosecuted for attempted murder. Should the charges be dismissed? Surely, 
had someone been killed, they would be convictable of murder. Miraculously, no one was hurt. Or either, neither, or both B1 and B2 liable for attempted murder. Well, we need more facts. B1 says, I thought for sure some idiot would get killed. B2 says, Nah, what idiot couldn't dodge a bowling ball? Under the traditional doctrine that purpose to cause death must be shown, both should be acquitted if their stories are believed. It is not B2's purpose to cause death. B1 is evidently indifferent whether or not death results, although he expresses surprise that no harm resulted. If a jury doubts that B1 cared one way or another, it should acquit. The model penal code, however, gives us a different result in B1's case. The model penal code provides, A person is guilty of an attempt to commit a crime if, when causing a particular result is an element of the crime, he acts with the purpose of causing or the belief that it will cause such result. B1 did what he believed would kill. B2 did not. The model penal code has a surprise in store for B2 also. Reckless endangerment. A person commits a misdemeanor if he recklessly engages in conduct which may place another person in danger of serious bodily injury. This offense was unknown at common law. So too was the practice of dropping bowling balls onto freeways and the practice of driving while texting. Have you recklessly endangered lately?